Cameron um, from Board of Taxation. Um, whether a, I just want you to ask you whether a, a professional advisor is one that necessarily sees conflict with personal values and the overriding duty to the client, the public, the, um, the profession and the court. Do you mind exploring that with us? Yes, yeah, so I too ponder the question of what, when we say alignment of values, who are we aligning to, you know, and so it could be your peers, it could be the organisation you work for, it could be the profession. And it kind of struck me that I've always kind of worked at, at professional firms until this um, latest role, that as a professional, there's almost an expectation that your values at some point may not be aligned with the values of others and you have to deal with that. And you see that, I mean, it's enshrined in legislation, it's enshrined in ethics, code of conduct, it's enshrined in, you know, professional, um, professional conduct rules. And so it's kind of the question of, you know, sh the, the alignment question for me is, is um, almost no surprise that you you will at times find that your personal values will be misaligned. Yeah. So the bigger question for me is, what do you do when there is a misalignment? What 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 can you do? And so there are lots of so there are a lot of options. I mean, one is there's always an option to do nothing. Another option is to kind of segregate yourself and from the people or the from the firms that you don't feel aligned with and to try and only kind of associate with those that you do feel a connection with, that's another option. But what occurs to me is that at the heart of this question of aligned values is the question of governance mm. and the frameworks that organisations and professions um, and firms set up so that you can raise and explore and go and investigate issues of misalignment in circumstances where, where you feel that your, your values are not aligned. And so I'm interested perhaps to explore with the rest of the panel whether there are structures and frameworks that with organisations that you've worked for that you can relate, relate to this to. Um, and what I think why I think it's important, I think what's at stake here is, um, potent, what is at stake, I think, is the question of erosion of trust. And it's erosion of trust, of personal trust, it's erosion of trust in organisations, and, you know, ultimately the, the big question, you know, the erosion of trust in the tax profession. So it seems to me that what is, what is important is this question of, are there frameworks to go and investigate appropriately when there is a, a, a misalignment of values. Um, and it also, it also occurs to me that those frameworks, it's not an HR issue. This is, for me, this is a kind of a professional conduct issue and it seems more appropriate to put it in the framework of what happens around whistleblowers. So, when you look at some of the whistleblower um, debate and commentary that's taking place at the moment around, you know, whistleblowing in tax, I mean, that's for a slightly different purpose. There are whistleblowing regimes, or there should be whistleblowing regimes, internally within firms and organisations that are there to investigate in a respectful way questions around, you know, uh, misalignment. Uh, questions around probity, etc. I also think it's sometimes a good idea to check in with somebody who's independent when you feel like your values have been, you know, violated for, for want of a better word or when they've not been respected. So, so just a, an example, like honesty sounds like a great value to have and I would say that I have a core value of honesty. And my family would probably say that I, that I can at times be brutally honest. So honesty, in my experience, is not necessarily always a shared value and is not always, um, or is certainly not necessarily shared in the same way that I would, would kind of respect that value. So I do find when I feel like 
this is not how I would behave or this is not, um, this is not, doesn't seem appropriate to me. I do like to check in with somebody who's kind of not involved and say, this is what I'm seeing. How are you reading this? How would you read this situation? Because sometimes you can, you know, you need to recognise that your perspective is just that. It's, it's a single perspective and there are lots of other perspectives and try to keep that. That also gives you great confidence in what to do next. Yes. Because you've had that reassurance that either you're not overreacting, for want of a better way to put it, or uh, that you are and that you need to, to take on the other side a yes, little bit Yes, exactly, yes. Thank you. Karen, you're, you're now in a, in a different situation. You're juggling board roles and different, uh, a portfolio career. Um, and um, um, what would be uh, your tip or advice around um, getting the balance with a portfolio career? So I'd probably say at the moment I have too much balance in my life. In <laughs> fact, my partner will probably share, share, share that thought, you know. Um, so, but, but in terms of, I guess the, the advice that I would share is if you want to transition your career from, you know, full-time practice to a portfolio career, the advice I would give you is to be patient. It's, it's not, you can't expect that it's going to happen overnight, but, you know, enjoy, enjoy the free time and the, and the better work-life balance whilst you have it, because I'm sure soon enough it's going to be taken away again. Yeah. <laughs>